Today we're doing a very quick tutorial on structural analysis in Grasshopper by using Kiwi3D, which in my opinion is one of the simplest, uh, most powerful and easy structural analysis plugins for Grasshopper. You can see the deflected shape, your actual sections and your forces, axial or shear moments, etc, etc. And you can obviously pair this with my other tutorial on a parametric truss, so we can just change the span, change the depth, and change how many segments are in the truss. And we can just quickly get new results. And a reminder, you can get more tutorials like this at our website. And you can also download some of the scripts in this area here. And we've got some demo scripts you can test out as well. And feel free to have a look at some of our other services. We've got model conversion, rapid framing from architectural models, engineering visualization, reinforcement, and a lot more. Okay, the simplest way to think about setting up a Kiwi 3D model is that you need the analysis model component and you need a solver. And that model is going to go into the solver. Now we need to supply some inputs for this model, not all of them. Um, one of the most important ones is the type of analysis. So you've got linear and non-linear analysis available. I'm just going to do linear for the purposes of this demo because it's a quick demo to get people started. The second thing is some structural elements. So for this demo, I'm going to be using these lines, which are just Rhino lines as beams. And it's actually easier than some other similar grasshopper plugins it's really quite easy to get it going and again you don't have to supply all the components to turn these lines into beams we're going to use the curves so i'm just going to make a curve grab a curve component and i'm going to set multiple curves and just drag and select them press enter that's my curves. Now I need a material and that's right at the top here. There's defaults or there's material. And actually this defaults to steel straight off. And that Young's modulus is correct, etc. So I'm not going to ch change any of these inputs. It's already given me a, a material that I want. So that's easy. Then I need a, um, a section. And again, it's quite easy to put sections into Kiwi 3D. You can make profiles just from drawn lines, which is great. Um, and you've got an easy box or pipe section. I'm going to use a pipe section for this example. And the diameter is 0.2. It's in meters, by the way, so that's 200 mil. That's a 200 mil pipe. That's, that sounds good to me. Now bear in mind that this is a solid section which is interesting so if you wanted to make it a hollow pipe you'd just input that little d. Now the curve refinement is something you need. That's because it's, there's two sort of modes of Kiwi 3D. One is um, lines and the other is surfaces. So we're using lines to represent beams here. We're not doing a um, finite element analysis of a floor plate or something like that. So we're going to use the curve refinement. And that's actually all you need as a minimum to make a beam. You can, you can obviously refine that down with a lot of other... You can put pre-stress and all sorts of stuff in here, so that's great. Now I would recommend in the curve refinement, 
and that's what makes Kiwi 3D a little bit different to other programs is it will split up curves based on this curve refinement for you uh, so its minimum elements is five I'm actually just going to make that to six because that gives us an even number which I found gives a slightly better looking result in some circumstances but um, just changing this number higher means you've got more uh, refinement in your analysis so you'll have a lot more points that are um, checked along the curves okay so that's our element our beam elements now we need some supports supports are over here I'm going to use support point and I'm just going to grab a point from grasshopper I'm going to set one point there and that's actually all you need and just copy and paste the second point now as structural engineers would know these are all fixed in XYZ also fixed in rotation and torsion oh sorry no they're not fixed in torsion or rotation which is correct so they're pins so that is a pin that's restrained in all directions but for the second one you really need a roller to allow this as it deflects to move slightly otherwise you're going to get a reaction at the end so for the second point in the X direction I'm going to release that so say false so I've got it and you'll see this pop up in a minute but I've got a pin here fixed pin here and a fixed uh, and a roller here so if I put these points in oh, there we go it's drawing it already so you can see my pipe size is rendered in that's my support conditions all three directions are restrained there and upwards uh, Z direction and Y direction is restrained there but not X so it can move freely in the X direction as it deflects and the last point um, the last part to put in is the point load so yeah it's really super easy it's actually easier than other similar software that I've found whoops point and I'm just going to set one point I'll just put it in the middle and uh, it's defaulted to a dead load um, it's 10 uh, it's got a value of 10 um, and we're just going to leave that for the moment okay um, the other two things you don't need so we've already got a model there I'm going to put that into the solver now okay so unlike some grasshopper components this doesn't run continuously so you have to tell this boolean function or run um, send it a true signal to run the analysis so there's a couple of ways to do that <clears throat> an easy way is to use this thing this button component in grasshopper so when you press that it just makes um, it, it becomes true when you press it so if I press that it will run the analysis um, which is quite easy way of doing it and probably the best way to do it because you don't want it continuously running um, if it's a complicated model 
Okay, so we've solved our problem. We don't have any errors. So now we want to have a look at the results. So the easiest one is deformed model. I just put my solved model into it and you can see the deflection of this truss already. Now I'm just going to scale this up a little bit so it's easier to see. And there you can see how the um, truss is deflecting under that point load in the middle. The other good um, easy way to see some, some results is the um, the one-dimensional results for lines or the two-dimension uh, element results for plates. So with the one dimension again you just simply put the model in and then I need this T value which is type. So how the best uh, it actually gives you a hint on how to use this here. Um, it just uses numbers but it will feed back into a component in Grasshopper and that's value list which is here value list and that defaults to this uh, input but if I put that into the component it actually feeds back and it will fill in the engineering properties that are available for this component so for example axial force is n you got your two moments your um, torsion your shear etc and the last thing you need to do is supply a direction to display the results so I've done Z in the past so this is just a Z vector and you can see it's showing them in the Z direction and I'm just going to scale that down a bit say 0.1 into scale so that's a little bit messy you might want to try um, the Y direction that might be a bit clearer and you can see compression and tension and this is uh, obviously the end value but you can uh, well there shouldn't be moments in this as a truss uh, but you can see uh, shears and other other um, other results from the analysis and you might say what are the values well that's available in these outputs here which are just the raw numbers or you can use an inbuilt grasshopper um, legend so it's under display in grasshopper and it's called legend and you can see that these these two values here C and T um, fit into that so you can see that what these values are so the green is minus 20 and the red is 27 and the last thing from uh, results is the support forces now there is something that doesn't make a hundred percent sense to me at the moment with Kiwi 3D and that is why this force is negative it may be just the way the algorithm rhythm works but um, if I flatten this for example it's telling me that one is down 20 uh, 2000 and one is up 2000 whereas in my mind if you've got a point force down you should have two positive values rather than one positive one negative so that's how you see force results but for some reason one of them is in my mind the wrong way 
around. I don't know if that's a bug with it at the moment or it's just the way the algorithm works and it's just the way you got to think about it but um, if anyone knows let me know in the comments. But as you can see it's quite easy so you know you can easily set a different point for this load, run the analysis again and you'll get a different deflected shape and your axial actions are in different locations. So overall it's really uh, very simple, clean uh, and easy to use structural analysis plugin for Grasshopper in my opinion. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.